Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. I've redone this intro three times because it's a brain fog day and I can't think straight. It's wild. But this is the last Shadow Broker DLC uh, video as far as I'm aware <laughs> in my current brain fog state. Uh, so we do a little bit more codex reading and then we talk to the drill friend. And yeah, so I hope you all enjoy it and look forward to it and I will see you in a second. Yeah, Legion has a gamer profile, and I find this constantly in it hilarious. John Smith, level 16 or 12, ardent Yakshi Necromancer. My gosh. Best supporter healer, best unit efficiency, suspected use of VI play assistance. Challenged and overturned. Suspected use of VI play assistance. Hacking. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike behavior. Wow, the maximum score during the N7 Code of Honor Medal of Duty. Cure for what ails you. Kill 100 plus quarians. Jeez! Geth Attack. Eden Prime Fundraising Edition. Donation level Ultra Platinum. Player score zero. Purchased but not played. Shoot, man. Like, what does that tell you, you know? Like, donating to the cause via his gamer profile, like, feeling some sort of responsibility for the damage is done, but obviously doesn't want to take part in the game itself. You know, to kill other Geth, you know? Interactive cross-species relationship simulator, playtime 75 hours. Player score 15, hopeless. <laughs> He's trying. It's trying. It's, it's not he necessarily. It's trying. It's best. <laughs> Jeez. Jacqueline Knott, wow. She's trying to do poet poetry, interesting. It's not a bad poem, honestly, I think. And of course Jack would be, you know, it would be the edgy girl who does poems, like, it's a creative endeavor, go for it. This one breaks my heart, though. Yeah. So they stole her from her parents by lying, pretending she was dead. Workout. Woohoo, okay. Old most popular workout entertainment. He watches Old Yeller.
Holy moly, she's got so many. I partner connections, oh my gosh. She's just looking to get laid. Holy cow. What? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. Jeez. Please. Yes, boys. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> she just, she doesn't know anything. I hate him already. <laughs> so she okay that's an odd thing to throw in here that she can't get pregnant like 
so. Like, I don't, I know it can be, like, I don't know, I just, well, I say so because it's one of those things that they always try to, like, male writers often seem to want to throw in all the time on their, like, super powerful female characters as it, like, I don't know, renders them with some sort of weakness somehow. And it's just, like, no. Like, yes, it's it's very painful for some women to not be, like, like painfully, like, emotionally, to not, not be able to carry their own children. But it doesn't, like, make you less of a woman, and it doesn't, like, make you less of a person to not be able to do that, you know? Just because you're a woman and, like, most, like, people, not most people, but many people see you as just a vessel for children, you know? A baby farm. And it's like, no, like, like, oh, now all, your all true purpose in life has been taken away from you. Not her successful career, like her kick A biotics, her extreme intelligence, you know. But it's like, it's still, like, obviously, maybe, potentially, Miranda did actually want to have a child, you know. And, like, it, I think Miranda would honestly make a great mother. I think she'd be really strict in some ways. But, like, I think once she got the hang of it, she'd be really good at it. But, like this is now a chance that she potentially can't have. I'm sure there's, I think it, what is it, she can't carry? You are unable to conceive a child. Well, she, there's, there's gotta be some way, unless, like, all her eggs are, like, uh, fro like, like, freeze, not, was it, like, like, what is the word, um, what am I trying to think of? Fried. Unless they're all fried, you know, um, they could probably extract some, and she could, like, do, like, a, like, a, what is it called? Oh my gosh, like a test tube baby sounds very, like, not great, but, like, that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? Um, or, like, a mother, like, a different person to carry it, you know what I mean? I, I can't think of the words for whatever reason because I'm a moron, but, yeah, I don't know. This just feels like the kind of thing they throw in, like, obviously it's a, it's a serious thing, and if it's something Miranda wanted and she can't have, like, it's a sad thing, but, like, it just feels like a lot of times male writers throw it in as, like, oh, no, look at this major weakness. They do it with Yennefer in The Witcher, too, where, like, she has everything she's w ever wanted, like, power, looks, all this stuff, a successful life you know, in a lot of ways, but she can't have children, and so she's not whole, and it's like, that's the big thing, right? It's like, you're not a, you're not a whole person because you can't do this one thing, and it's like, you can get another, you can get one, there's a bunch, like, kids are everywhere, <laughs> like, you can make one, like, a different way, right? Like, not synthetically, that's the best thing I can think of right now, but like, what is the word, like, the, I can't think of it, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, pulling out the egg and, like, you know, oh my gosh, putting it in a tube, you know, type thing. <laughs> um, or you can adopt. Like, I don't see why, like, having to carry your own kid is supposed to be this, like, huge, like, oh no, she's not a real woman and she can't have this complete life anymore. It's like, you still can. You still, you still can. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a pet peeve of mine. It's just a big pet peeve of mine and it happens more frequently than it should. At least it did. Uh, I think nowadays it's less likely to be used as one of those, like, you know, very stereotypical tropes. So, anyway. Holy moly. That's so much information. This delivery pickup. Thanks. Uh, is there Gall, don't care. Don't care. Don't care. <gasps> give me, give me. Where am I gonna put that? It's gonna have to go on my desk, I think. Investment opportunities. So this is maybe I should have freaking done. What? Maybe I should have. Uh... Oh, this like this would like give me the, the stuff that I could pick up. Purchases lately. She may be expecting to move to a larger mansion. That's nice. Customize my armor. What's this do? Oh, hey! Oh, music. Nice. Shepard, glad you stopped by. We don't get many visitors. Take it easy. You've been through a lot. You're probably right. I never did say thanks for the rescue. Liara never gave up on you, Farron. I just helped. I'm still amazed Liara came for me. I'll never forget what either of you did. I can log that in the archives for you, sir. 
I see you met the secretary. Mm -hmm. For two years, Liara didn't stop looking for you. You two must have been close. She's a good friend. Better than I deserve. Yeah, let me just, uh... Take let me just interrogate time. him. Thanks. Hi again, Shepard. What will you do now that you're a free man? I want to help Liara rebuild this place. But after that... Your schedule's getting full, sir. Let me sink it to your arm. Oh, auditor. boy. No thanks, I'm fine. <laughs> How did you and Liara both end up looking for my body? Cerberus headhunted me and Liara to steal your body from the Shadow Broker. I was working for the Broker at the time, and he's the one who scraped up your remains in the Ugh. first place. What a horrible way to say it. What turned you against the Shadow Broker? He started working for the Collectors. You weren't their first victim. I am... was an information traitor. Not a slave. Mm -hmm. How do you think Liara's doing as the new Shadow Broker? Operations are almost fully recovered after a slight dip in efficiency. Ever since we repaired the network, Liara's been glued to the archives. <laughs> I caught her sleeping at her desk more than once. She's busy, but I think she likes it yeah. that way. Looks like you've made a friend. The drone follows everyone. I don't know why the Broker kept it around. I'm a shell for a specialized data processing VI, custom built to your specifications. <laughs> it helps coordinate the network's massive information feeds, but it could use a different interface tone. You deemed my default personality sufficient for your needs, Shadow Broker. I wish it would stop calling. Yeah, no, that's gonna be weird. Take it easy, Baron. Thanks. It's so odd to see another drill that isn't Thane, you know. What does this console do? This is the video surveillance access point. I've queued up the archive footage you requested on your last visit, Shadow Broker. Aria Talok, Omega. She's one of the reporter ladies. She's the good one. Fred Mazar. Oh. Citadel. He's alive. He's the one that th that Thane's son was gonna kill. Donnell Udina. Citadel. Jeez. Armando Bailey. Citadel. What odd places for cameras, poor Bailey. It's lonely when you're not working. David Anderson, set it out. My dad? Oh, he saw. I just realized he's talking to a Cerberus dude. The guy's got like a Cerberus logo on. He's walking through the Citadel with a Cerberus logo. What an idiot! He's probably trying to get information about me. Like Anderson wants to know how I'm doing. Omega. I don't know who this guy is. He might be in one of the comics. Kalisa being seen oh, out. bad. Bad reporter. I don't think you would survive a punch from a Krogan without being armored. But she must she must get punched all the time. She's probably had facial reconstructive surgery. Citadel. Did it just kill that Krogan? Or... <laughs> it's up on a walkway. Gee, or it's just walking past one, maybe? It's creepy. It's creepy. Matriarch Athena. Ah. Is this where we live? This is where we learn, right? That uh, Matriarch Athena is Lyra's dad. Lyra's dad. Not Torsk, Tachanka. Ooh. Ooh. Elias Kellogg, Omega. 
Oh, this is the guy, the guy um, that we went to the party for, Kasumi. It's okay, he's dead now, I think. Jacob Taylor. Oh, this. Normandy. SRC. This is uh, this is Kasumi's footage. I don't know why the game was trying so hard to make you want to like Jacob, like want to romance Jacob, when they made his romance pretty bland. Subject zero, purgatory, ship now defunct. It's too bad we can't get her to do this in game, but you know. Aria Talok, Omega. Check for more vids on your next visit. Okie dokie, will do. Search terminal. No, thanks. I'm good. Good. Time, time to talk to Liara. Oh, that's not. How are you doing, Liara? I'm a bit overwhelmed, to be honest. The Shadow Broker had more resources than you can imagine. Here, come on over. He had top level access to the Turian and Asari governments, and more than one Solarian Dalatros traded in town. And now it's ours. You're not going to turn into a reckless <laughs> in the galaxy, are you? I can understand the temptation. I've got all the secrets of the galaxy at my fingertips. Give me ten minutes and I could start a war. She's evil! But I've got a purpose. Helping you stop the Reapers. That will keep me honest. It would have been interesting to have Liara... You know, Relatively speaking. <laughs> it would have been interesting to have Liara go bad, go rogue, and to have to, like, track her down, hunt her down, and, like, have her be a villain in some way. That would have been really interesting, honestly. Redemption possible or not, you know? It would have been interesting. If you're in over your head, we could just crash this thing and walk away. That's just it. In a way, I feel like I belong here. Working on my own, I was always hunting for leads. With the Shadow Broker's resources, it's about organizing, cataloging. I've got everything, Shepard. This is a dream job. Although, the location could be better. <laughs> uh, it's foreshadowing slightly in the future when she's gonna just set up shop on the Normandy SR2. Um, it's interesting, she's one of those people that, like, really enjoys, like, taking a mess and, like, making it neat and tidy. Like, the hunting was fine, too, but, like, she's definitely got that academic background of, like, organizing data and also going into the field on occasion, but, like, she's definitely very academic. And I, I have a very good friend who's very much in the, you know, like, she'll look at, like, a mess, like, that, like, was made by, at a job before she got there, you know, like a like a paperwork mess, like a filing mess, and she's like, ooh, yay, it's like, it's like Christmas. She just loves to organize it and get all the data, like, in her head and figure it out and, like, visually organize and mentally. It's really, it's just funny to me. Have you found anything useful yet? The Shadow Broker knew about the Reapers. Perhaps that's why he offered to help prove Saren's guilt to the Council. He didn't want Saren to succeed. He also knew that the Collectors were Protheans, repurposed to be Harbinger's puppets. There's even some data on the Protheans. I think he knew what was coming and was looking for a way to survive. Interesting. Why was he still looking at Protheans? They gave us the warning in the conduit at Ilos, but we've used those. The Shadow Broker seemed to think there was more out there. Perhaps the Protheans had other plans, or... Maybe he was just grasping at anything that offered some hope. True, but Liara is exceptionally capable in that regard of, like, piecing together his Prothean data. How'd you know what the Shadow Broker was? I didn't. I had no idea what to expect when we finally found him. But I researched pre-space flight cultures during some of my Prothean studies. I know a bit about the Yogg. There's more on the terminals if you want to look. They're a fascinating culture, and a terrifying one. We'll see them a bit more in Mass Effect 3. I don't think they're a ton, but there's one, it's on the Solarian homeworld, actually, where they've got some Yogg in, like, a testing facility, and they get out, you gotta fight them. How's Baron doing? As well as you'd expect. 
After two years of intermittent torture. He gonna be okay? I don't know. He wants to work, so I'm letting him help. Maybe it takes his mind. Are you two together? <laughs> so you and Farron? No. He's been through a traumatic ordeal. He's emotionally. <gasps> Look at her and needs to being be intelligent. He's very grateful to me for saving him. But it would be irresponsible of me to take advantage of that. <laughs> She's being so good about it. <laughs> Thank you for being respectful of him. It was good talking with you, Liara. Let me know if you need anything. I think what I need right now is a friend. I can't leave for too long, but spending all my time on this ship, maybe next time you come by, I could come up to the normal. Yeah. Room. Sounds good. Next time I come down, it's a date. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not gonna force her to come with me now, you know. She's like, maybe next time, and I'm gonna be like, no, do it now. Like, no, I'm gonna be like, yeah, yeah, whenever you want. Whenever you want, friendy pal. Anyway, I think with that, that is essentially the end of the Shadow Broker DLC. I usually play it towards the very end, so I don't know if there's like more stuff, like more talking I could do with Liara as I like do other things. Um, but I think I think you can come in for like little things periodically, but it's not like a huge deal. So, but I, I don't know. Let me know for sure. Um, but with that, we're going to end the Shadow Broker DLC, which went... Which... I just sort of lost my train of thought. Uh, totally lost my train of thought. Um, it's a short one. That's what I was trying to say. It's a short DLC. Like, fairly short DLC. One of, the, one of the longer ones available to Mass Effect 2, but still. Shorter than I expected in some ways. Um, but we will do one more DLC. We have the Arrival DLC left after this, which is another... Well, it is it is shorter than this one, I believe. Uh, just sets up the beginning of Mass Effect 3. So we're getting closer and closer. Part of me thinking that these are, like, so short is like, Oh my gosh, like, Mass Effect 3 is going <laughs> cool. I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared. But, um... Yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you guys for watching the Shadow Broker DLC with me. If you stuck it out this long, I appreciate it. One more DLC and then we'll all be in a Mass Effect 3. It's going to be a big cry fest. Whew, okay. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, let me say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Miss Kalita, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher and Adam, my tree tier patrons. Thank you guys so, so much for your support. I really appreciate it a lot. Christopher, thank you so, so much for your support. You're the super bestest, and I appreciate all your support. I truly do. And Adam, thank you so much for your support. You're also the super bestest, and I really appreciate your support. And I just remember I need to get postcards out to you guys for Patreon rewards. Ah! <laughs> so thank you all for supporting me despite my haphazard uh, Patreon updates. I appreciate it a lot. So thank you all, everybody, for watching once again, and I hope to see you all in the next one.